All right, and we have some interesting energies out here today. And it's another one where we're going from like the 10 of cups to the 10 of swords. And we just had a read where the way that came out was like the 10 of swords wasn't a bad energy for a person. It was someone was perceiving someone else as being unbothered by things. Like somebody perhaps like they would watch them face like challenges or whatever. And while the person would deal with them head on and they were challenges, they would largely be unbothered by it. It was something like that. And this time I also have like an interesting interpretation of this Ten of Swords. Again, if I'm like sugarcoating anything, usually I'll get called out about it. But I don't think that this interpretation is off. But again, we'll look. So what we're starting with is a message with the Ten of Cups. Now this could be a message that someone's very happy about sending or happy about receiving, or it is a message that is going to a specific community or a specific community member. Now, we're going into great fortune with the Ten of Swords. I think that whatever this message is or whoever's sending it, whatever it's about, this message is going to disappoint other people. Like it's going to break other people's hearts because we're ending with the main male and the star. The main male could be a cis man, does not have to be, could be a trans man, or this could even be a woman who's just an active energy because um, number one, the main male, that's like the magician, someone who is getting things done, someone who is very capable of handling and creating what they want to create. That's all that is. So it could be any one of those things, but this person, whoever they are, I think they are the star, they're a star, and the audience loves them. So I think it is this main male sending the message. I think this person is a catch, and I think likely this person might be choosing someone. Or if this is sort of like, more, if it's less romantic and it's more of like a business or investment type of thing, this person is picking who they want to invest in, who they want to associate with. And, you know, just by dealing with this person, they bring great fortune with them in some sort of way. It could be status. It could be money. It could be both. Um, but in picking someone... This person is breaking other people's hearts who are around them. Who Like, oh, well, why didn't they pick me? Why'd they pick that person? I think maybe that's what we're dealing with. And if I'm wrong, it's going to come out in the tarot details. So let's start looking at them. So under this 10 of cups message, well, we're still in the energetic realm with this, though I think this person kind of knows. Like, it's more like the seven of cups being options. There's one like main option highlighted here with the red. This person knows who they want to send the message to, but I would guess they have not sent it yet. Maybe likely because they know it's going to cause like a little bit of chaos in the community. That 10 of cups, it could be that this person right now, because they're more existing in like platonic friendships or whatever, that the community around them is harmonious. But the second they single somebody out for like special treatment, romantic treatment or whatever, that very community could turn on them, right? Because they are such a catch, because they're so powerful, whatever it is, they are an influence within the community. So let's see what's under this 10 of swords and great fortune. We have the page of swords in reverse. So what I'm getting is this person has not sent this message yet with the page of swords in reverse. And there's also something about malicious gossip here. This person is concerned about that. They're concerned about how their social network is going to respond to them if and when they do this thing. So let's see what we are ending with here. The high priestess. So whatever this person does, this is a very static read at the moment, which I get frustrated with, but we'll look at it. Whatever this person does at the moment, they're keeping it close to themselves. Like they are not like this person would not have breathed a word of this to anyone. Um, so let's go around again. And then I don't know how many questions I have about this, because if this person is not acting yet, there's not a lot for me to ask about. All right. On the seven of cups, the five of, so this person, whoever this person is with this five of pentacles, they don't like leaving people out. They don't like for other people to feel disappointed or excluded by them. And I mean, I think that that's a nice trait to have. However, um, 
you also have to think of yourself, right? If you are holding yourself back completely because you don't want to disappoint people around you, you know there's going to be hurt feelings that sort of like, oh, there's a reason why people don't manifest, right? Um, it is a little bit people pleaser. I don't think that it's that extreme, but I just very much get that this person likes for people to feel included. They like for people to feel like um, they're loved and cared for. And I think this person is probably concerned that their choice, whatever choice that they're making here, would make others around them feel like diminished or less than or like because they are such a big influence that it's sort of like, well, I'm going to make other people like feel unworthy. And based on what I can see about this person in the cards, I don't know that that's an unreasonable or like big headed issue for this person to have. So under this, yeah, no, Queen of, so this person has someone they're attracted to. We've got the King of Coins, which can be a person of influence, likes this Queen of Wands. They have not communicated yet um, because they're worried. They're just worried about this. Um, I don't think this person is concerned about being rejected by this person. Uh, like, that's not really... I mean, they might a little bit with this Seven of Cups. Like, what if this person rejects me? I still feel it's more about the community thing. So this person might be a little bit insecure. I don't think that it's something that's overwhelming them though. What they're more concerned about is other people around them. All right, and then on this star, um, it looks like ultimately this person is gonna make their move. We have the Fool with the Knight of Cups. That is an approach, that is a leap of faith, that is like, I'm gonna go ahead and take this risk. They might do it um, on the DL, right? They might keep it very, very quiet when they do it. And they might um, ask this person, whoever they're going towards, to keep this quiet. So can you tell me, it's sort of like, it's this, like this seven of cups, five of coins, 10 of swords, 10 of cups. Like this is all kind of one thing right here, right? This is all like kind of going into why this person hasn't communicated yet and why they may want to keep the communication quiet or very, very private. Can you tell me about this community or if I'm wrong about it being community, can you like correct me? Like what is this person worried about with the approach or the people around them? Um, I think this person, if this is a man, this person has a lot of women or like femme energies around them. If this is a man or a mask, this person has a lot of like women or femme friends. Yeah, this, uh, yes, this person, whoever this person is, Queen of Cups, Justice, Six of Cups, they have a lot of um, feminine energies around them. Um, these would be platonic connections, but like I said, this person is very, very interested with this Queen of Cups, Justice, Six of Cups. I do not want to hurt these people's feelings. Um, so the, and, and that can sometimes happen, right? When you have, um, you know, a mixed group, uh, mixed gender friendships, right? And people are like, would be, so let's just keep it like heterosexual, right? All of these people are heterosexual or at least heterocentric and they have a mixed gendered friend group. It can be, right, that if a man is single within a group where there are a lot of also single women around him and he is friends with them, that the equilibrium in the group can be okay, like you can maintain that as long as he is then like maybe like dating people outside of the group or he kind of doesn't talk about who he's dating, or he doesn't choose someone from that group. It's sort of like all of the women or femme energies around him will feel equally cared for and attended to. If he then picks somebody that can, like depending on the emotional maturity level of the people in the group, it can cause drama. It can, and like people end up feeling, even though there's no like promise of like romantic, like 
attention from someone, it can feel threatening for people or it can at least be a disappointment, right? If someone's a really great catch and you are friends with them for a long time, maybe like even though you could maintain the friendship, it could be that some of these people would have hoped that, hey, maybe like he'll choose me one day or she'll choose me one day, they'll choose me one day. And when they don't, if these aren't people who can kind of take that in stride, um, deal with their own kind of sting of rejection and like this is only ever going to be a friendship, this person was never interested in me, if they can't deal with that, then they might tend to act out typically, if we were talking about emotionally immature people, they're going to act out against the woman um, because they want to preserve their, like, uh, they want to preserve their particular image of the man, right? They don't want to trash the man because then, like, all hopes of the relationship in their mind, right, the limerent stuff, all hopes of that are completely dashed if they, like, it's weird to think somebody would blame somebody for like liking who, whoever, they, but it, it happens, okay? So um, they wanna preserve their feelings about the man and sort of treat the woman like the villain, like she's done something or it's unscrupulous or whatever. So they can kind of maintain their, their fantasy version of the relationship and that there would perhaps be potential with this man if this other woman was gone. So it's something like that. It's something like those sorts of dynamics, negotiating that. Um, so can you tell me about this Queen of Wands that this person is fancying? We have a Queen of Wands fancier. I don't know that this is a dick witch. I don't think so. That just seems like the Queen of Wands has been coming out lately as just somebody that someone is attracted to. That's this. There's the Queen of Wands. Okay, so Okay, so this is supposed to be telling me about these two. Whoever this Queen of Wands is, I think this King of Pentacles perceives them as someone they can like, I'm saying, I know people get so upset about that, build with. What I mean is build a solid foundation. I think that this person perceives this Queen of Wands as having a similar work ethic that they do. And so they think that they would be a good match. Their purposes and lifestyles probably align because the King of Pentacles, while that can be someone of influence, can also be someone who is solid within their work ethic. They have self-created their wealth. They are enjoying their wealth, but they're also a hard worker. So they could perceive this Queen of Wands as being the same way, someone who's self-motivated as well as someone they're attracted to. And based on what they have seen surrounding that with this Eight of Cups, Two of Wands, they have been inspired to take a different path for themselves. Um, so what was the path that they were on before? Okay, this is kind of weird. This is so weird because our five of coins is back again. And we have the six of coins, which is pertaining to these people that are around this person. The path that this person was on before is that they were giving to whoever these friends or like them energies are. But whoever these people are, this person, this king of coins who is showing as the king of wands here, was like perceiving them as people who like needed him or them. Um, and this was giving this person some type of fulfillment because we have the King of Wands and then the Ace of Coins. So like this person was fulfilling some sort of need within themselves and some sort of need within these other people. Like by this King of Pentacles, King of Wands' main male star's presence, they were taking the people around them from the Five of Coins to the Six as being not depleted, they were adding that extra coin. I don't think that that's money. I think that has to do with like this person's presence. And so this person just like is aware that these people, I guess are kind of busted. This is kind of like weird people pleaser or like, I don't understand this. This feels kind of like weird codependency. Why was this person doing this? I don't know, sometimes people do like, like I really get a lot of fulfillment out of being needed, but it seems a bit odd. 
Um, why was this person doing this? Um, it seems like this person, it seems like this person didn't know if they were ever going to be in kind of a four of wands type of relationship for some reason. And so this is how they were choosing to invest themselves. It's like, I don't know that I'm ever going to be in like this type of relationship, maybe because like whoever that they weren't just finding their preference or like people weren't meeting their standards, whatever it is. Sometimes um, people can be living in specific ways that not a lot of other people do. And so um, this person wanted to like, so let's say if it was like a marriage, like a traditional, a traditional gender roles marriage where like, this is a cis man who would be, you know, the protector, provider, all that stuff. This person, instead of like getting married to someone or getting into a relationship with someone they didn't want to do that with, what they did was they did it in a minor way for a lot of different women and femmes around them. I could see how that would create something problematic. I could see how all of a sudden removing, okay. So we see how the turntables, all right, you gotta be careful with stuff like that and ne never say never, whatever you do, okay? Um, I don't know if this person's an immigrant or not, or this person maybe lives in New York or Manhattan. Um, or like the children of immigrants, uh, the child of an immigrant family could be. Um, so let's go ahead and see what this person is gonna do with the, this is why this person's like, we have to be so quiet about this because I've actually created a small problem here. Um, but I mean, you're gonna have to figure that out. I would guess that this person, cause I mean, they don't, They haven't approached whoever that queen of wands is yet. So they don't know that they want to marry that person. And so I could see they like, they don't want to disturb the equilibrium unless they are like making the move, move, move. Like the, I want to propose to this person type of move. So I, I get that. Um, yeah, this person's gonna like the world chariot strength. This person has decided that they are going to do this. They are going to make the approach. Um, so how is that gonna come in? This could be at a public event. This is this church thing again. What the heck? Somebody, there's like some sort of official event, Hierophant, Six of Wands, King of Swords. That's like, I'm gonna talk to this person at some sort of like, religious event like um it might not be religious it might be if it's not a religious thing because like you know ramadan diwali like christmas like with the world like that's like it it could be anything like that if it's not specifically a religious event it could be a cultural event that has some sort of traditional significance to you your city your faith your race your culture something like that um, but that's that church thing again. Um, okay, so it'll probably be at a public event that this person will approach. So I really don't have any more questions about this. Um, so let me go ahead and clear all this up and then we will get final advice outcome. Um, I mean, yeah, it's just, this is, this is just, at least the approach is happening. The approach looks like it is happening. I'm just pulling one because we're ending with this Queen of Swords, which I think is that King of Swords. Like, I'm going to talk to this person. Yeah, and they're like, there's something about. They're visualizing this right now, but there's something about like. This, there's, y'all, there is some sort of fucking event. And I don't know what the, can you tell me anything more about what this event is? Like, what is that? I'm so curious because it keeps coming out and I'm just like, that's such a weird, well, I don't know. I'm saying it's weird because I'm not especially religious. So it's weird to me, but I could be talking about like people who are like more heavily involved in like a faith practice than I am. Oh my God, what the hell? <laughs> now I really don't know. Um, what? Uh, I don't know. I guess maybe that could 
could be a Halloween. Are y'all Satan? Are y'all Luciferian? Do you, well, I mean, Luciferians don't really hold like uh, Samhain or like I mean, it could it could be something like that. It could be something um, with uh, the Great God Pan, or it could be something a bit more like um, I I don't know. This is just this is just very interesting. Let me look at this again, um, and I'll show you why I'm like making faces. Um, okay, here's what I pulled at first. We got the Magician, the Lovers, and the Queen of Swords. This person wants to make this relationship come together. They want to approach, they want to, they want to talk to this person. They have not done it yet. The approach with this ace of coins two of wands it's like they're they're like i'm gonna do it on like i'm gonna do it here i'm gonna do it there and they're also worried about people monitoring they're worried about other people seeing this or other other people like it's kind of like monitoring spirits but when i pulled this two of wands i pulled that hierophant back out again and it's more like the future event that this person intends to approach at is something to do with that hierophant. And when I pulled for the event, what I got was the devil and the five of wands, which I mean, that could be kind of like a, a more like, like, I, I'm not getting toxic or drama. This is kind of like giving a rave, like, you know, you know, in Blade, the blood rave, like, <laughs> Are y'all vampires? Like, they, there's some sort of, like, maybe more raucous type of party. Um, I mean, and it could be. Like, if, you know, you're going to go to, like, a, a crazier Halloween party, it could very well be that. Because this person wants to approach the star. Like, they're also, they're a star. They are visualizing or perceiving this other person as a match to them. So they would also be seeing this other person as a great catch, a star themselves. They want to approach at this specific event hierophant devil five of wands so there's some structure on that but there's also somehow right pandemonium there is also somehow a little bit of like edginess to this like it's a little bit carnal it's a little bit darker but like mixed with the hierophant like that is just like is very very interesting energy to me very very interesting energy but it would suggest some type of tradition so it is a tradition that this particular event occur, which could very well be Halloween, but it doesn't have to be. It's just something like that even could be like, like I, we've been getting like kink messages lately. That could be some kind of annual kink event. If y'all know that you're swingers or something like that, that could be some kind of annual swingers event or something like that. Again, it doesn't have to be like that. That could even be like down here we have, um, I was going to say polyamory. <laughs> We have um, like Wiccan pride, like we have Wiccan pride events. We have like pantheistic like festivals. We have like non-traditional religious festivals. So it, it's just giving that like, while this is a traditional event, it is also non-traditional. That's what that devil is. And it could be like, if we were perceiving this from like a more mainstream, like basic Betty type of perspective, like they would like perceive that as like, oh my gosh, like so scandalous. But if you are living this life, you are not going to perceive that as scandalous at all. You're going to know exactly what I'm talking about. So this is all very interesting. And I hope it does. Like if you are the person who's approaching or the person who is being approached, um, you know, I hope it all works out for y'all. I hope there's little to no drama within the community. And like, maybe you'll get a relationship out of this. If not, like maybe you'll at least have some fun times together. So let's officially close with the perennial words of the highest authority. Happy painting and God bless my friends.